Hi guys, in this series, I'll be solving many programming questions from a beginner to an intermediate level and I'm going to use C++. I'm using the Visual Studio code and you'll find a link in the description to download it and how to set it up in order to work with the C++. So the first question we're going to solve is this. Write a program which calculates expression n power n where n is an integer filled by the user. So let's start by displaying a message to the user, enter a number, and let's put an end line. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new variable called n, and I'll initialize it to zero, and then I'll take the number from the user and store it inside n. Now I'll make another variable called result, and I'll initialize it to one, and in this variable, I will store the n power n. So let's make a for loop that runs from i equals 1 till i is less than or equal n, and I will increment i. Inside this loop, I will assign result to result times n. This can be also written as result times equals n. So in this loop, result will be multiplied by n n times because we are running this loop from i equal 1 till i equal n so in the first iteration result will be equal to 1 times n so result is equal to n in the second iteration result will be equal to n squared and in the third iteration result will be equal to n cube and this will continue until the nth iteration where result will be equal to n power n so now let's just display result and let's test the program so I'm going to enter let's say 4 and I get 256 which is 4 power 4 we're going to write a program which reads a sequence of real values filled by the user and stops displaying finished when the sum of these values exceeds 100 so let's make first of all a const integer called max and let's set it to 100 and uh, let's make an integer n initialize it to 0 this n will be the input of our user and let's make another variable called sum and also initialize it to 0 in order to solve this I'm going to use a do while loop uh, this loop will run as long as sum is less than or equal to max so inside this loop I will uh, tell the user to enter a number and I'll follow this by an end line now let's take uh, the number from the user and store it inside n and now let's add n to our sum so sum plus equals n this is also written as sum equals sum plus n okay when we exit this loop we're going here and we're going to see out uh, finished and that's it okay I'm going to add one thing let's uh, display sum uh, at each iteration so see out sum equals sum followed by an end line and now let's test our program okay enter a number 5 our sum is 5 enter another number let's say 70 75 20 95 and 5 we get 100 now I'll enter 1 so sum will be 101 and I will no longer be inside the loop so sum is 101 and we get finished we have to write a program which reads a sequence of positive integers and uh, shows their multiplication and their sum when we enter a negative number so first of all let's make an integer sum initialized to 0 and an integer product and let's initialize it to 1 so I'm going to use a do while loop this loop will work as long as the input of the user is a positive number so let's say n is positive okay now I'm going to make another variable and initialize it to 0 and this will be the user input and inside the loop we will um, see out enter 
a number followed by an end line and let's now take n from the user and sum should be equal to sum plus n and the product should be equal to product multiplied by n so I think this is it let's see out sum equals sum and our product is equal to product and let me add a space here and now let's just test the program so enter a number one two three four five and let's now enter a negative number so the sum and the product should be displayed minus one and as you can see we have that the sum is 14 and the product is negative 120 and this is a wrong answer and i'll show you why here when we are taking n from the user regardless if it is positive or negative we're adding it to the sum and multiplying it by the product this is why we got a wrong answer so in order to fix this simply let's add an if statement if n is negative we are going to break out of the loop so for example if i enter minus one i'm going to break out from the loop and minus one will not be added to the sum and will not be multiplied by the product and that's it let's just test the program now let's enter the same numbers and minus one now we get the correct answer sum is 15 and the product is 120 we're going to write a program which reads a positive integer and shows its strict divisors strict divisors means that we want the, all the divisors without the number itself so first of all let's just make an integer n and initialize it to zero then let's take n from the user let me display a message enter a number and now I'm going to start a for loop so int i equals 1 and i will be less than or equal to n over 2 then I will increment i why i is less than or equal to n over 2 the strict divisors of any number as I said are all the numbers without this number itself and the divisors of any number are always less than or equal to this number divided by 2 there are no divisors greater than n over 2 so in this for loop I'm going to test if we divide n by i if the remainder is equal to 0 then i is a divisor for n so I'm just going to display i uh, end line and that's it now let's test the program enter a number so let's say 15 and we'll get that 1 and 3 and 5 are the strict divisors of 15 and if you want all the divisors of 15 we just need to see out n here so let me run the program and let's test it with 20 so we get all the divisors of 20 not only the strict divisors in this video we have to write a program to test if a given number n is a perfect number or not a perfect number means that n is equal to the sum of its strict divisors in the previous video we made this program to find the strict divisors so i'm going to use this code from the previous video up until this point where we printed the strict divisors so i'm going to change this statement and i'm going to add i to a variable sum and i will define this variable here and i'll initialize it to zero so after the loop all i have to do is to test if the sum is equal to the number itself so this number will be a perfect number i'll use the ternary operator so i'll see out if the sum is equal to the number then i'll print perfect and if not i'll print not perfect so this is it let's test the program so let's say number six number six is a perfect number let's try it for number five for example 
5 is not a perfect number so we get not so if you are enjoying these videos don't forget to share and like and if you want to support me you'll find a link to my patreon account in the description see you in the next video